In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. This, this past week, this past Sunday, when I got home from work, I, uh, here, this is work, by the way. <laughs> when I got home from worship, I, uh, I read the news as a way of tuning out and, and uh, saw again that there was a second mass shooting. I was aware of the first one, wasn't aware of the s second one. And so, as I was reading that, um, I began to, this, this week, think about what the Christian response is, but I'll, I'll tell you what my initial response was. Well, the first was uh, a, a kind of numbness that um, this is something uh, culturally that we see quite often, and therefore, for some of us, it, it no longer elicits much excitement or shock. It's, it's kind of uh, expected. Secondarily, outside of offering a, a short prayer um, for those, you know, people involved and those who had died, the other reaction was, in my mind, was predicting how the pol politics would immediately be used and discussed and how this week was going to be such an interesting political conversation in the environment. So... The response to tragedy in this case, something very, very tragic, I think over 31 people died um, and at, at some place that many of you and I may frequent, like Walmart or the shopping center or, or other places. Taking all of the shock of that and within a very, very short period of time, thinking about how on the news and online they'll be arguing about it politically. So, I again ask myself, well, what is the Christian response to these sort of things? But then I realize that, you know, we're so inundated by the world that oftentimes we think the Christian response is the worldly response, and, and we don't know the difference between a Christian response and a worldly response. And, and we have to acknowledge that in our world, uh, there is a lot of... Um, a lot of a strife, a lot of debate, and that the world essentially, uh, the way to fix everything, whenever there is a problem of the human heart, there is always a new policy or a new way to tweak policy that is supposed to fix our problems. There's always a new candidate that's going to be some sort of messianic figure and deliver us into a new age of prosperity where people's hearts will no longer be hard and where random acts of extreme violent won't, violence won't happen. Or some policy that will make it so that extreme natural disasters don't happen. Either way, the worldly way of thinking is always that there is, at least in the U.S., is that there are always some pragmatic political expedient way to fix the problem and what immediately happens after that in the discussion of how to fix the problem with policy we immediately have both the right and the left to line up each other against each other and to say it's your fault it's your fault and so culturally we live in a era and maybe we always have where there's always a sense of blame and there is never a sense of responsibility. So again, I asked myself, what is the Christian response to this? And I thought about our Lord. Now, our Lord, you know, was, was sinless and innocent. And yet, in his own innocency, he was willing to die on a cross. And in the scriptures, it says that he took on our sins voluntarily. He did not die for his sins. He died for other people's sins. He was put to death for their sins. That's what we theologically teach. And we know that while our Lord was on the cross, not only did he 
take on the sins of the world as though they were his own and he took responsibility for them. He also said, forgive them, they know not what they do. And he even in the end basically said that he didn't want those who had killed him to be held accountable for their sins. He forgave them. That's the example, the height of the example of what it means, uh, you know, what our Lord does. And if we're to follow Jesus, this is something that we would emulate. This is something that we would take seriously. But what does that look like in our own personal lives? When uh, these tragic events happen, happen, of course we should pray and we should pour out our hearts in grief for those who are afflicted, those who are wounded, the natural disasters. And of course, we should possibly even go serve them if they're especially in our local area or if there's charities. Those are fine responses. There actually may be policies in the polit political realm that need to be worked on. But I mentioned that our Lord Jesus Christ took responsibility for the sins of the world. And so we have to acknowledge that we are not like Jesus. We are sinful. Jesus was not sinful. Jesus took on the sins of the world and yet he was innocent. We are part of the sins of the world. We contribute to the sins of the world. We contribute to this culture. We are ultimately responsible for our culture, whether we agree with the direction it is going or not. And so the answer that, that one answer that I came up with for myself was that we need to take responsibility for the areas where we are, we are like these killers. We need to own up to the fact that sometimes we have hatred in, your, in our hearts. More than that, maybe you could just simply ask yourself the question, have you ever put anything above God, the love of God? Have you ever put anything above the love of neighbor or the love of your enemy in your life? Well, I know I have. Have you ever looked and dehumanized anybody? Have you looked with the dehumanizing eye of lust at people? Have you looked at the dehumanizing eyes of politics, at the various groups and the various people that we don't accept? Have you ever looked down upon the poor? Is there any part of you that has thought this way, has been this way? Well, as I said, I know I have. Have you ever been so angry that you wanted to lash out? Have you ever been depressed and nihilistic and thought that nothing mattered? You see, each one of us participates in our culture. And each one of us, in some way, in our own hearts, Although we may never be the person who pulls the trigger, and we may never be uh, the person who goes out and commits atrocious crimes or, or heinous acts that we watch about on the news, but somehow each one of us individually, corporately, we participate in this culture, and we contribute to this culture. And it's important to note that these shootings are simply a symptom. Policy wants to focus on shootings as though they're the problem. But the shootings are merely a symptom of something that's sicker and something that we all share in together, which is our culture. And you might have known us, noticed, but our culture has become very sick in very many ways as it moves further and further away from God, away from each other, further individualized, further secularized and we're a part of that even if you're fighting against it we're a part of that and so 
as I thought about this, the final conclusion that I came to was that we need, of course, to pray for those people involved. And that we would also pray that God would not have us reap what we sow. That somehow, not only would future people be protected, but that every sickness and sin that we have that contributes to this mess, that we would take responsibility and begin to deal with it, and that as we sow the seeds of sinfulness of our own hearts and our society, that somehow God would would stop it, that somehow he would heal it and transform it. I know that this answer, uh, how uh, a Christian might deal with suffering in uh, tragedy, is just very one-sided. I've only focused on our responsibility. But I just want you to note that within our culture, that is the only aspect that isn't focused on. The only aspect that isn't focused on in our culture is how we all participate in the culture and that ultimately when sicknesses and sins arise in the culture, that we're a part of it. Anyways, may God have mercy on us. He may have the mercy on the people who died in those tragedies. May he help us repent as a culture, individually, corporately, as a church, so that this culture may be turned and so, of course, many lives can find the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Christ is in our midst. Amen.